fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. I hope the camera is running. I don't even know. It is running. Let's do a retake. <laughs> Mathematicians, welcome back to another video. I fricked up the intro in both the German and the English version of this episode. Um, in the German version, I started with an English intro, which really doesn't fit. I'm, I'm probably going to put it as an outtake at the beginning. Never mind! We are going to talk about the rationals today. Okay, it's the set of things A over B, where A and B are out of the positive and negative integers, where B is never, ever, never, ever equal to zero. All right, so this is not something that we want. It just is what it is, okay? We define it like this. You can define it differently. V out of n, then you don't need it to be equal to zero because in n, zero is not included, all right? At least in my definition of naturals. Now, we are going to dive right in and talk about all the good stuff that happens in Q. Addition, multiplication, division this time. Oh, division does work, that's spicy. We are going waste here, my boys. And yeah, other than that, order, what about the zero, associativity, blah, blah, blah. So at first, let me tell you something. We are now in our first so-called field. This thing is called an abstract algebra, a field, a quotient field at that, because we are dealing with quotients of things, okay? This is what you call a quotient. It's, it's like a fraction of things. And in a field, everything works nicely. Everything that you want, you have a one, you have a zero, you can do each and every operation and the inverse operation at that, each element except for zero is invertible, meaning we can multiply an element three with its multiplicative inverse one third to get out one, for example. So everything works nicely. With that out of the way, we finally do not need to use cancellation rules anymore because division does finally work. Addition works, subtraction works, multiplication works, associativity works, distributivity works, blah, blah, blah. It's amazing. Everything works now in Q and it's fabulous, except for division by zero. That never works except if you are in the so-called wheel, but this is not where we want to go here. Okay, this is way too complicated for high school algebra and shit. So we are going to dive right in. So I don't want to elaborate anymore on addition, blah, blah, blah. We are going to talk about fraction addition later here, but at first let us go into the division thingy. Okay, so division finally works. Division finally works. So this is good. We can divide by things. No cancellation rule needed anymore. This means finally, after so many episodes, we can do this double dot thingy that we don't want to use really on this channel. Or you can put it like this, okay? Number over here is a number, okay? This is like the fraction line. I don't know. Does this thing have a name? Never mind. Bruchstrich in German. And the B is this dot down here. Meaning this time, for the first time, five over three is actually element of a set that we are using. It's element of Q, the rationals. So this is nice. Division finally works, addition works, everything works. And this is amazing. This makes our lives so much easier, but we are still going discrete here. We are still not continuous. This is what the reals are for. This is why we only deal with reals later in the game, okay? Later in the high school game and the college game. So, now associativity also works, distributivity, commutativity, etc. Nice. What other things are there? Well, let's talk about fraction addition. I mean, addition on normal numbers works really nicely. Um, Z and N, those sets are included in here. If you set B equal to one, then well, it's just for example, three over one, which is three, which is element of natural numbers and the integers. Or if you put A being equal to negative three and over one, it's just negative three, it's element of the negative integers. So that works out. But what about if we were to add two fractions together? Okay, so fraction addition, for, for example, one third, plus four over three, all right? So what happens if we add those two together? At first, I'm going to show you the basic algorithm, okay? Later, in the later whole series about fractions, we are going to go into more detail why all of this works nicely and even how it works with different denominators, okay? This thing up here over the Bruchstrich is what we call the numerator and this thing down here is the denominator. 
right now we have the same denominator which is good because we need the same denominator to add fractions together so what you basically do if you have the same denominator just put your line here and then the denominator that both of those fractions share under there and then you just add the numerators together 1 plus 4 gives us 5 over 3 and there's nothing left to do we have added fractions together successfully but why does it work this is where fraction multiplication and the hidden notation behind fractions comes in and also the distributive laws in our quotient field Q now at first let us talk about what a fraction actually is. What is A over B exactly? Let us put a little example here. Let us take a look at 4 over 3. 4 over 3 is actually nothing but, okay, 4 is, well, if you have 1 times 4 apples, then you only have 4 apples. Let's rewrite this as 4 times 1 over 3 and this is where fraction multiplication comes in that we are going to talk about in a second. You just bring the 4 to the front and well 4 over 3 is nothing but 4 times 1 third. I'm putting this multiplication symbol here on purpose because in some schools or in all of the German schools there's a weird notation thing going on without the dot which says this is 4 not times but I don't know what the name of this kind of fraction is in English but this means this is four times this fraction basically added together it's a weird thing four whole things okay plus one third so it's like four cakes plus a third of a cake instead of four times one third of a cake okay if this makes sense there's probably going to be an annotation here what they are called in English and then you are probably um, knowledgeable about what I'm talking here. So you probably know what I'm talking about here once I put it as an annotation. So this is fraction multiplication in a nutshell basically. So 4 is just a fraction, it's just 4 over 1. And well, 5 over 3. Okay, we are going to do some playing around with those and make use of the distributive laws and what we have here to arrive at this same result here. So 1 third plus 4 over 3. I'm going to rewrite it. 1 is nothing but 1 times 1 over 3 plus, well, 4 times 1 over 3 yet again. Now we are going to make use of this convention here or this way to rewrite each and every fraction. This is 1 times 1 third plus 4 times 1 third. And you might notice something. 1 third is a common factor on both of those. All right, this is just a common factor, meaning we can make use of the distributive laws which hold in the set Q to factor stuff out. This is 1 plus 4, this is why I have put the 1 to the front. Okay, rewritten 1 is 1 times 1. It might seem arbitrary and weird, but there is a purpose behind it. 1 plus 4 times 1 third. Well, 1 plus 4 is 5, gives us 5 times 1 third. Well, 5 times 1 third by this notation is nothing but 5 over 3. And there we go. This is why we need a common denominator on fractions that we add together. And the reason, or the, the real reason behind this, is just, um, well, exponent laws, basically. So. Um, we are going to go into more detail about this once I do a whole series about exponents, bases, stuff, okay. But up until now, just take into account that we need the same denominator on both. And if we don't have the same denominator here, we need to expand fractions such that we can add them together actually, using the distributive laws. Now, with addition out of the way, subtraction works the same way. Just replace the plus by a minus and then you are good. So this makes 1 minus, three over, uh, one minus 4 over 3 is negative 3 over 3 is negative 1. Now what about fraction multiplication? What about, let's say, um, 5 over 3 times 6 over 7? Well, fraction multiplication is in most cases way easier because, well, it's just straightforward multiplying numerators together and then multiplying the denominators together. Meaning this gives us 5 times 6 over 3 times 7. Up here we are going to get 30 over 21. Okay, I know this might uh, trigger you a tiny bit that I have left it like this because in a normal case you would like to reduce fractions such that the GCD, okay, greatest common 
um, divisor on both the numerator and denominator is exactly one. How are we going to do this? Well, we are going to do basically a prime factorization in both the numerator and denominator. Meaning, if you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay, 30 is nothing but 3 times 10. And we know that 20, 21 is nothing but 3 times 7. And by some weird rules that we are going to introduce in this whole series about exponents and stuff like this, exponent rules, we can cancel out the threes on both the numerator and denominator to arrive at 10 over 7. And this right here is a completely reduced fraction. And this is what most teachers find pretty attractive. They do not like this, okay, this looks ugly. But real math boys love this, okay. They love to reduce fractions to a minimum. Now, multiplication, addition out of the way, what about division? Division is something that most students have a huge problem with, okay, on, on fractions. So I'm going to write it like this. For example, you can divide fractions, for example, 2 over 3 fifths. You might have never seen this notation before. This is what you would call a complex fraction. Complex fraction is just a fraction where you have a fraction in the numerator and or denominator. Most schools like to write it like this, at least in Germany, 2 divided by 3 fifths. Okay, I don't like using this notation. I said it before, but just for clarification purposes, we are going to rewrite it like this, such that you can see the algorithm, the, the cooking recipe behind dividing by fractions. Now, we want to do something that's called taking the reciprocal. Reciprocal is just interchanging numerator and denominator. So 5 thirds this time instead of 3 fifths. And we don't want to divide by it anymore, we want to multiply by it. And all of this just follows from the exponent rules that I'm going to introduce in a later series. Like I said, fractions are just an easier way to write exponents. All right, just as a little side note. Stay tuned for that. I can cover everything in one series. It, it, it's going to take quite a while until we reach the point of um, having covered everything. So 2 times 5 over 3 is just like what we did before. Okay, just multiply this number by the numerator up here in the fraction. So 2 times 5 is 10 over 3. Okay, 10 is 2 times 5, so nothing that we can reduce anymore. 2 and 5 are both prime numbers, 3 is prime number, nothing that can cancel anymore. So this is how division works on fractions. Just remember this little algorithm, all right? Now, last thing, okay, um, nearly last thing. What about number 0? Well, it just is what it is, okay? Um, 0 leaves everything alone or it destroys everything. And we still can't divide by zero. That's nothing that does work, all right? So with zero out of the way, what about the order in Q? This is something that is covered in high schools pretty often because it makes for some good little tests, okay? Daily exercises that you can actually give a grade on. Because, well, ordering fractions by their sizes is uh, something you can uh, do using an, an algorithm, but it's also something that uh, students need to practice actively such that they understand the, the um, algorithm behind it or like what it means to compare fractions by their sizes. So let us take two things yet again. Let's say um, 3 over 5 and for example 1 half. We are going to take two fractions that we want to compare sizes. Okay, so we can still do this in Q just like you would say 2 is less than 3. You can do the same in Q. So here's the question is 3 over 5 greater or less than one half? This is the question here. Well, we are going to see about that. And here is one of many, 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 many algorithms that you can use. Okay? This just means greater or less than another thing. We don't know yet. We are going to decide this pretty soon. What we are going to do now is we are going to do some equivalent playing around here. For example, let us multiply both sides by 5 and let us multiply both sides by 2. Okay, so at first let's multiply by 5 and then let's multiply by 2. If we multiply both sides by 5, we are going to get rid of this 5. Okay, 5 over 5 is 1 for some odd reason. I mean, it does make sense if you have 
five out of five pieces of a cake it's just a cake in itself so it does work out so five over five is going to go away leaving us with a three on the other side and on this side with five over two for now but we are also going to multiply both sides by two two over two is one leaving us with the five on the side okay and also yeah with the five on the side also what's the other thing well two times three that's the only thing that is left is six if you can follow what i did here if you're a, a young boy okay never did this before then uh, just take this multiplication of five on both sides leaving you with three greater or less than five over two and then multiply both sides by two it's the same thing i'm just doing two steps here simultaneously now you can decide is five greater or less than six well it's obviously less okay if you have six apples then you have one more apple than five apples so six is greater than five but this immediately implies okay you can do the same process backwards those are equivalent um, reformulations of the problem you can divide by those factors yet again and then you might notice that three over five is greater than one half okay it's just the very same thing those two statements are basically equivalent they imply both of each other so uh, this also makes sense if you take a look at a cake for example okay let's split it up into five pieces at first so if you have three out of five pieces this is this it's obviously more than if you would just have half the cake which is this one all right meaning half is less than three over five and it does make perfect sense in my opinion so if you look at it if you look at it like this and this basically covers it already this is all you really have to know about fractions for now other than um, yeah all this more uh, sophisticated stuff like adding fractions together with a different denominator here and now we are done with the rest of the numbers next time real numbers really important boys and i hope you did enjoy this video if you did please like subscribe and recommend channel if you like i hope you did enjoy this video and you did watch it to its full extent because for the youtube algorithm by the merge actuate check out the main channel and i'm until the next video i'm wishing you guys a flammable day see ya